Hello. Today's episode number 137 of the Professor Slots podcast discusses Indiana Slots Return to Player. Are slots still tight in Indiana? Plus, in this episode, I'll be covering the current state of slot machine casino gambling in the great U.S. state of Mississippi. Thank you for joining me for the Professor Slots podcast show. I'm John Friedel, and this is a podcast about slot machine casino gambling. It is where I provide knowledge, insights, and tools for helping you improve your slot machine gambling performance. In case you missed it, on my last episode, I went over slot manufacturer IGT from my weekly live stream Q&A session on YouTube. Further, I reviewed Minnesota slot machine casino gambling in 2021. I hope you enjoyed listening to my last episode as much as I enjoyed making it for you. Remember to visit professorslots.com slash subscribe to get my free report revealing the top seven online resources for improving your gambling performance, including the one I've used as a top tier slot machine casino gambler. Here's the audio recording of my latest live stream Q&A session. Hello, Slots enthusiasts. How are you? I'm John Friedel. Welcome to Professor Slots, a channel where you can learn to play slots smarter and leave the casino with your winnings. It's great to see you all here again for another weekly live stream where I review slots-related topics of interest to slots enthusiasts. If you're with us live, be sure to say hello and ask your slots-related questions. I'll check in with the live chat a little later in the show. Oh, and special thanks to Paula for being our moderator today. Thanks, Paula. Pre-orders are available for my first online course, 30 Days to Play Slots Smarter and Win. It can, com- it can be completed at a leisurely pace of one lesson per day, or if you want to be less leisurely, a whole lot faster. Some assignments and concepts may need time to con- you may need time to consider, but yes, it can be completed in a day, if a rather long day. Thanks already to those of you who have signed up for my 30-day course. This online course is a beta test version discounted over 50% off its regular price. Further, I'm pre-selling it to gauge interest. Thankfully, there's been a lot of interest. Uh, The course will launch on Friday, May 7th at 8 a.m. Along with the course are valuable options, uh, especially uh, getting lifetime access to the course. Purchasing this pre-launch beta version now now at 100% off gives full access to the non-beta improved versions later. The link for signing up for the course is in the description of this video, or if you're listening in the podcast in this episode's show notes. So let me show you the course sign up page. And I also I also drop in the uh, link uh, to the live chat um, if it is working, maybe, uh, um, maybe if I use the right keyboard. Not that. Um, doo, doo, doo. By the way, there are going to be technical difficulties today. I'm trying several new things. Uh, maybe the day will come when I don't. Uh, be careful ke- clicking that link in the live chat. Um, it'll take you out of the live stream. And you don't want to <laughs> do that just yet. Um, and uh, uh, <laughs> uh, so let me share this screen. Uh, and yeah, there there will be there will be technical difficulties. I already know it's going to happen in about half an hour, um, but we'll get through it. It'll be fine. I have a workaround, as a, like any good engineer. So uh, this is this is the live. Uh, this is the um, the page where you go to sh- to sign up. I put the link in the sh- uh, live chat. It's in the description. It's in the show notes for the podcast later. Uh, if you're when you're listening later. Uh, or watching later. And so I'm showing it now, the green button, some people have had a bit of an issue with this on a a phone. Uh, Look for the green buttons with the white lettering and that's where you go to uh, actually purchase it. And the course launches in 12 days, only 12 days. Why am I having a live stream today? We might not have one next week, Uh, 12 days left. Um, But um, what you'll learn is uh, my methodologies, uh, including having an improved observation what to look for. Uh, And then there's uh, the casinos, you know, been working long and hard uh, on us for many years. And with this course, we're getting started with kind of responding to that. So I'll talk about some of the manipulation that the casino uh, is trying on you in the hope that understanding what they're trying to do is... um, going to help you resist it because <laughs> uh, they don't 
they're not really your friend, <laughs> um, but they do, you know, the good ones try to be, uh, um, you know, good customer service. So uh, I'm going to scroll down a little bit here, show you the course curriculum. This is a little bit different from what you might have seen last week because I've been working hard. And so uh, these are all the chapters. Uh, there's an introduction. There's a bit on the end. Uh, and then uh, chapter seven is bonuses. I try to use, use seven as much as possible. But if you were to expand on, say, uh, this first one here, you'll see what's under this chapter. So um, uh, Thinkific, which is what I'm using, uh, uh, calls every entry a lesson. And there's 128. Uh, but a lot of them are just links. Um, two articles and whatnot. So each day we'll have uh, each day of the 30 days will be basically a video, an introduction, uh, a video on that topic for that day and a few things for you to go check out and links and other information, resources, and also some tasks, uh, checklists, that sort of thing. So um, while it may seem like, like 128 lessons are a lot, uh, and it may not end up being exactly that number, uh, there will be, uh, uh, you know, it'll go fast. Uh, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a bit. So you can uh, feel free to scan through this and uh you know, first steps to improvement. And there's many, uh, there's several days here. This is how I'm ending the course. Uh, and uh, so feel free to browse through that. It's much more expanded than it was. Then there's a brief intro, pricing options, uh, the cost will go up. Uh, and we'll, I'll talk a little bit about that. And then you get some course bonuses, like you get the PDF version of my book, Learning to Win, uh, not the hard copy, but the PDF. And um and then you get uh, the gambling records template because you'll need those and or you can do your own. Uh, and then, of course, lifetime access. And so uh, sort of pulling back from that a little bit, um, uh, uh, I wanted to show you that. And there's still plenty of time for me to get ready for launching, but I'm excited to being able to make this self-led online course for slots enthusiasts available to you. So we have a few uh, donations. We have a donation from Chuck. And technical dif dif difficulty of that being far too loud. <laughs> I'm not going to count. I'm not going to keep track. Um, uh, we have more coming. Uh, you can watch me get red in the face and sweat a little bit today. Um, Right. Uh, so thank you, Chuck, so much for the donation. Uh, it is very much appreciated. Uh, you, you've, you've given a lot. And uh, uh, I think almost every live stream, uh, certainly all the ones you've been at. And um, it is much appreciated to uh, in support of the show. Thank you. OK, so where were we um, in today's topic? Uh, we're diving into publicly available return to player statistics at Indiana's commercial casinos. Also, and I think you'll find this as interesting as I did. One big reason I'm doing these analyses right from the start of these state return statistics is to compare different states. I've already done, what is it? First, I did Florida, not all of them, the commercial ones that have returned uh, statistics available online, those in Broward County and Miami-Dade County. Uh, the commercial casinos in that count, those two counties, uh, and then did Mississippi, then New Jersey, and now our fourth, Indiana. And now I'm starting to see some trends. And that's really what I was hoping to see, or at least document, uh, how does New Jersey compare to Mississippi, to Florida, to Indiana? And I think you'll find that pretty interesting as a little, little eye opening for me. Um, uh, right. Uh, so all U.S. casinos closed for months in 2020. Loss of revenue from being closed caused some of them to never reopen. A big concern for Indiana slots enthusiasts and others is if casinos have reduced their return to player. And if they did, have they stopped doing it yet? And I've lost video, which is odd. And should come back, I hope. There it is. Uh, my apologies for the loss of um, video. I think we're going to have that problem a lot today. Uh, <clears throat> right. 
So a big concern of Indiana slots enthusiasts and others was uh, having to do with um, is return to player, you know, has it been reduced by the casinos? And if, if it did, have, it, have they stopped yet? So we're going to look closely at Indiana slots return to player return statistics. Every U.S. casino closed in 2020 due to the global pandemic. These 989 casinos at the time closed quickly and reopened slowly. If ever, at least 100 casinos have yet to reopen and may never do so. It's hard to keep an accurate count because uh, there are some casinos that are opening. And so, you know, did the ones that were closed open or was it a new casino? And I'm not digging into that quite so much, but it's about 100 uh, that closed, about 10% of them closed and have not reopened. Um, the pandemic has been tough on casinos. There's no doubt abrupt closures financially hurt the U.S. gaming industry. Their financial woes continued after reopening due to social, social distancing, often resulting in a 50% reduction of available slot machines. When my large audience of slots enthusiasts started returning to casinos, they reported tight slot machine gameplay. But for the most part, slots players shrugged and said, well, that's understandable. We were just glad casinos were able to reopen. But one month turned into six months and six months turned into a year. Eventually, slots enthusiasts began to ask casinos, are you done yet? So let's check Indiana Gaming Control Board's return statistics to see what's what. Indiana has 14 commercial casinos. Just give you an overview. Indiana has 14 commercial casinos, including two proposed casinos and one American Indian tribal casinos. Indiana's 1851 constitution banned lotteries, historically interpreted by courts to mean all gambling. In 1988, Indiana approved a constitutional amendment removing this ban within months. Oh, boy. This is going to be interesting. And we're back, I think. Um, if this keeps up, I will, um, and I do apologize, I will switch to a different camera. Um, probably should do that before too long. Um, let's see. Okay, well. At least we won't lose each other this time. Okay. Uh, <laughs> apologize for the um, the mess ups, uh, and but we'll we'll be fine. Uh, not normally a, a view that I give you, uh, um, but at least it's a stable view. So um, right, and that means I need to come back over here and do this. Uh, right. And where was I? Um, oh. Thank you, Magpie. Uh, Magpie 11. Um, uh, I am sorry that you missed last week as well. Uh, it's, it's um, you know, great to see the regulars, but things do happen. Um, family stuff and, and others and, you know, family is more important. So uh, no worries there. Uh, right. So uh, technical difficulties, I did warn you. Hopefully um, I've <laughs> put a halt to that one and we'll see what else comes up. Um, uh, but uh, thank you, Meg Pye, uh, very much. And uh, I didn't show Chuck's, but I should have showed Chuck's. And uh, Chuck is here, and he says morning. And Magpie is here, and she says, sorry, I missed last week. So these are super chats, and if I get a moment, I might uh, share how to put those in. But it's basically a, a donation at the bottom of the um, uh, live chat, if you're here live. Um, okay, so... <laughs> Uh, not the best view. Sorry. Um, I tested the new camera and, and everything and uh, it, it uh, didn't hold up uh, this time, uh, but that's OK. So um, I was saying in 2007, right, in 2007, Indiana allowed horse tracks. Uh, and they allowed, excuse me, they allowed to have horse tracks with 
as many as 2,000 electronic gaming machines. Further, the state legislature approved land-based casinos in 2015 and allowed riverboat casinos to move into a land-based casino facility if it's located on its current property. So the riverboat casinos are becoming non-riverboat casinos if they have the land to put the facility on. And that was 2015, and it takes a couple of years to build these facilities, not to mention budget it. Uh, and I think a few of them have started to do so. So the state of Indiana has a federally recognized Oh, And if they have, then they are able to have a central server because they can't do that in the riverboat facility, but they can do that on a land-based facility. That means a lot of the strategies that I talk about, you know, they require uh, having a central server. And that means um, those strategies, those uh advantage plays become available. Okay. Um, uh, the state of Indiana has one federally recognized American Indian tribe. In 2015, Pokagon Band of Potawatomi Indians successfully negotiated a tribal state gaming compact, subsequently approved by the U.S. US Department of Interior. By the compact's terms, the tribal casino could only have class two bingo style gaming machines. In 2018, the tribe opened a casino in South Bend. It's one of the four wins uh, in the in that particular area, um, the Indiana Gaming Commission (IGC) regulates commercial gaming in Indiana. The IGC has its uh, gaming control division as a law enforcement arm with a primary goal to investigate illegal gamb illegal gambling. Enforcement of illegal gambling at bars and taverns is by the Indiana Alcohol and Tobacco Commission. Indian Indiana's 14 commercial casinos. Uh, and I think I have a picture here somewhere. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. And uh, I could uh, complain. I'm really tired. <laughs> Been working on the on the uh, getting ready for the launch of the sh of, of the uh, course. And it's been a lot of fun, but it's also a little bit tiring. Um, so everything's not getting triple and quadruple checked. So let me show you this, which is a map. Oh, uh, put that away. Uh, which is a map of Indiana's casinos. So uh, they have, uh, uh, and one of them is is tribal. So there is uh, uh, 14 casinos, including two that are proposed in Terre Haute and Gary, Indiana. And you can see that. And Indiana's tribal casino is Four Winds Casino South Bend, 150 miles north of Indianapolis, directly east of Chicago on the border to Michigan. It offers 1,800 Class II competition-style gaming machines alongside live poker tables. Unique to Indiana, the table game of poker is a skill-based game and therefore just another Class II game as players bet against each other and are betting, betting against the house or casino. So this is one of those little details uh, that the state gets to decide on. Okay. IGC, the Indiana Gaming uh, Control Board, uh, uh, Commission, uh, offers comprehensive and annual reports of all aspects of legal gaming in Indiana. So I, I will show you what that looks like, but first let me kind of explain. So the casino hold percent for each casino, uh, commercial casino, is uh, win divided by coin in. And so they provide those two numbers by casino by month. Uh, and if you're probably most interested, and I try to consistently use not the casino hold percent, but the player win percent. So you subtract uh, 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 win divided by coin in, which is how much people spend, but win is how much they win. And you divide that, but you subtract it from one or a hundred percent and you'll get then the player win percent, which is probably what you're most familiar with. Uh, Indiana, and I'll show you what that looks like. Indiana has um, a couple of different ways they provide the information, a PDF, an Excel spreadsheet, HTML, uh, and then they have these annual reports, PDFs, which has sort of the annual information, but not the monthly information. And <laughs> they've changed their format for those Excel spreadsheets um, and the HTML uh, and the PDFs. They've changed their formats three times in the last, since beginning of, la of 2019. So um, one of the things that got rid of about the middle of 2019, and I know some of you are going to be very disappointed about this, but in the middle of 2019, they got rid of having 
um, returns, monthly returns by slot machine denomination by casino. I don't know why not. Why did why did they do that? Um, but they did. And so that's gone now. And it was uh, pretty useful at the time. Uh, and uh, Paula, there's no reason to even say goodbye. Um, right. So let me pull this down and show you. Uh, this is my website. And if you were to click on... Um, these state by state, you would see a summary article and you can go to your state. But I've already found Indiana uh, slot machine casino gambling. This is where my review article and some of the words that I used a moment ago, um, it's standard format for every every state. I've been working on them for like four years as an online resource. Um, and so you can see a list of the casinos or websites. And I, I do this yearly, actually about every 13 months. And there's a section down before, just before the summary uh, called payout and returns. And I went over this in December uh, when, when I wrote this article in January, when I last wrote this article, updated it. But if you go to IGT, uh, you have this uh, um, indiana.gov, uh, in.gov site, and the Indiana Gaming Commission uh, link is here. And under publications, you can find annual reports. And here they'll show 2021. And I think this is great because Louisiana has uh, uh, posts on March 12th, uh, excuse me, April 12th, uh, 12 days ago for March. And as some of you know, like Louisiana doesn't post, you know, I think January just came out. And so, that, you know, they're three months behind Ohio, I think is something very similar to that. Uh, maybe four months, something like that. Uh, it's just a while. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, right. And um, so, <laughs> uh, I, if you go down to the archived reports here, if you were to click on the archived reports, it's interesting. They go back all the way to 1996. Uh, one of the things I want to do at some point is basically do what I'm doing for 2019, 2020, 2021. So we can have 2019 as a baseline to compare to 2020. And uh, I'd like to go back to 1996, all the way back each year and just see what the trends are sort of for gambling for the last 25 years. And there's a few states where you can do that, where they have consistent return statistics. And we, you know, people say, well, when I, you know, 25 years ago was a lot better. Well, let's just see about that. Uh, but that's another topic for another time. And also probably quite a bit of work. Uh, so if you were to click on the um, uh, 2020, reports here, uh, then you would get, or excuse me, there's also this uh, other this other button over here under publications uh, called uh, annual reports. And this is the annual report. It gives an annual summary. It talks a lot about taxes and where the money goes and that sort of thing. And we won't get into that. What I want to show you is if we go um, to, let's say here, this is March 2021 um, uh, revenue report for each casino separately. And these are, um, um, uh, uh, you know, each casino, they're also kind of divided up sometimes depending on how this goes uh, into its, um, uh, you know, uh, divided up into uh, slots versus sports betting uh, and also uh, table games. And I'm going to kind of avoid all of that, skip over that. Um, how many table games they have, table win, number of slot machines, each casino for this month. And uh, there's also year to date on the same thing. Uh, and then you get down to table games, which game, how many, which casinos. And they, they sort of divide the state up in the northern and I think it's central and southern. Southern and what's the other one? Um, other. Yeah. Northern, southern and other. Which um, sort of makes sense if you look at this. Kind of the northern and the uh, 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 southern. Anyway, uh, 
so we keep on scrolling until we get to the third to the last page, I think it is, more stuff on uh, each of the different uh, regions of the state. That's about the only time they ever use it. Um, but then we get to this page, which is Northern, Southern, and then Other, which are basically the racinos. And you can take the coin in uh, and rather take the win, the amount that players won, and uh, divide it by coin in, take that and subtract it from 100%, and you can get what the win percent was for March 2021 for Ameristar Casino with its 971 um, slot machines. So I did that. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So what is that? 13. 13 times 12 times three years? No, two years. Uh, 12, 10, yeah, two. So I did that 315 times, March, January, February, March as well. Uh, uh, something like that, a little bit more than that. Anyway, um, <laughs> and so now I'm going to uh, uh, thrill you uh, with a bunch of data. So this is each of the casinos in alphabetical order. I also have a total at the end because we'll need that later. Then this is coin in, and I started from January 2019, and I went all the way to the most recent one, March 2021. The two uh, rows that are blank here, this is when the casinos were fully closed for that month, but they were also partially closed for March and June. If you saw my other presentations on Florida, Mississippi, and New Jersey, you kind of recognize this format. I'm trying to be very similar. Uh, but then there's also the amount won, uh, not just how much people bet, but how much they won uh, and got back. And that, these numbers are here in dollar amounts. So m most of these are in the um, uh, tens of millions. Right. So I take this and I divide it by that and I multiply it by 100% or subtract it from 100%. Uh, and I get this. All right. So that's the mechanics of it. And what I want to do now is show you the results, which is... Okay, let's see if we can do it this way. I recognize some of you are on phones, so I want to make sure I make this as big as possible, kind of fill the screen, um, and that should work out fairly well right there. This is Indiana. Um, the colors hopefully come across. Um, if you've seen my other presentations, I did something very similar. The win percent is over here on the side. It ranges from about 89% to 92.5%, a little bit less than just over 92%. That's the range of all the casinos in, in Indiana for the, since the beginning of 2019. You can see the gap, which is when the two full months, when they were closed. Um, what, what was it? Um, May and June? No. Yes. Uh, April and May. And uh, what's interesting here is you can see, and I, we saw this in Florida and Mississippi and New Jersey, some casinos have a great return. It's the, the highest return of other casinos. And then some are lower. And then you get some weird behavior, uh, which would include what happened after after they were closed, um, but also kind of uh, before all this, this is um, this is Rising Star, and in one month in October 2019, they dropped almost the full range of the spread of player win percent range, and I wonder why. You know, did they have an event? Did they have a cash crunch? Did they have something happen? This is the sort of thing you want to watch for. Not really part of our investigation right now, but it is obvious something happened. Um, but that was October 2019, so we'll move past that. Uh, but then you see the behavior right before uh, the everybody, everybody closed. I mean, in March, they were partially open. That's, they weren't closed the full month, but they were closed some portion of it. And so if you look at Tropicana, which consistently might say kind of is the lowest month to month, uh, they just dropped it to the, to 
not quite the lowest. Um, and then when they reopened, that was what Majestic Star did. Ma Majestic Star 2. It's a, uh, like I said, Riverboat Casino. They also have a Majestic Star. The, I think it's the original and Majestic Star 2 is the second one. Um, anyway, uh, we had that drop just beforehand. Now, I've talked about this before, uh, and you can pick out your casino, and we can kind of select them uh, carefully if you want to. But what I did was I took the state average. Um, that's why I had that total column that I showed you. So this is remarkable. Uh, it's remarkable because it doesn't show much. All right. They were consistent in 2019. This is why we I did 2019, because I wanted to get the baseline. Remember the variability we saw in New Jersey? And this, this is robust. This is like we hit our numbers. All the casinos hit their numbers to make this average. They're just doing the job. They're, they're, they're doing the casino business and they're very consistent. But then started getting a hiccup in 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 maybe January, uh, then in February, and then I guess they tried to, as a group, kind of recover. You can sort of see that here where there's a lot of ups right there in March, um, probably trying to get people to come in <laughs> during a pandemic. Um, uh, it's in the data. Or maybe people wanted to go to the casino because they knew it would be closed for a while. Whatever the reason, whether it was a casino or the slots players or both, there was an uptick uh, after four months of drops. And uh, but then we have this gap, and then we can, uh, then they came back. And if you look at the, you know, if you consider this kind of collection here, uh, right along the ninety point five percent line. They don't even approach 90.5 uh, here. And this is, a. Uh, they came back in June and also last month, they uh, had even lower when then they when they came in. And last month, it's been going down for the last four months since, um, uh, what is that, 90.3 here. And uh, so December, January, February, March, it's been slowly ticking down and this is the lowest it's been in two years two years and three months 27 months it's been it's the lowest see it's the lowest uh state average now some casinos are trying to uh do well uh for instance look at that uh french lick which was i would call them kind of like sometimes they're first sometimes they're second um uh in 2019 but then they came back high and I, I like the character of a casino that shows that, but they have started to dip uh, uh, after that. I mean, basically they maintained and all the others dropped uh, after the pandemic. Uh, and, and you can see that. So one thing I wanted to uh, talk about with you is <clears throat> we had this graph for Florida, uh, commercial casinos in Miami-Dade and Broward counties, uh, uh, Mississippi, and New Jersey. Uh, I wouldn't want to put in all those graphs to make this even more busy, uh, but we do have this total, statewide total. So here they are. Take a moment and take a moment and look at that. This is the player win percentage totals for four states. And eventually, we're going to have like 18 of these as I work my way through the other states that have monthly return statistics for their slots. We, you may remember from my Mrs. Well, from my Florida presentation, my first one. I didn't go back to 2019. I only realized afterwards that I needed to have a baseline to compare it to. Uh, so I only have for Florida uh, 2020. And uh, that was a couple months ago, so I, it ends uh, and in December, and it wasn't even January. But you can see kind of, we, we, there's a whole video on that we talked about, and there's an article out there on my website uh, you can look at. Um, but it's up here. I'll just say it, it's up here. And then you have Mississippi, which we did next, and we saw that there was a lot of back and forth, uh, but then they dropped before the uh, 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 before they closed, and then they've been more or less climbing ever since a couple of hiccups here, but they've been basically climbing in returns, whole video on that, including an article. And then we've got, uh, uh, let's see, New Jersey, which I, I thought they were kind of like taking your money. We, they're, you know, they're 
particularly since they've been dropping the last four months. And we hadn't seen that before. It was kind of steady uh, for Florida, and but rising in Mississippi. Uh, but then we had New Jersey, uh, the gray here, where it's dropped the last four months. And it was lower than almost anything else that had been done in the previous, you know, since beginning of 2019. But then we got Indiana. Look at Indiana. It's lower than New Jersey. Eesh. And they're, in the last four months, they're dropping as well. Out of the 18 or so states that have return statistics, I wonder how many we're going to see like that. You know, that, and that's the point. That's why I'm doing all this, not just to tell you about your state, but try to look at these, you know, it's only four. Is it a national trend yet? Maybe. You know, we'll see. Kind of ominous, particularly, you know, I, I should go back and fill in the most recent returns for uh, Mississippi and for Florida and see if they're trending down like everybody else, because, you know, you need to know this stuff and we'll see if it's the national trend. I'll get a few more of these under my belt. Um, I, I, I'm not doing them every week. Otherwise, we're all going to get like spreadsheet, whatever. Um, uh, uh, and oh. Um, and, and I think I can show that as soon as it shows up on my screen. There it is. Okay. Uh, Noel, uh, thank you. <laughs> my favorite professor, great information. He says, um, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, Noel gave a $5 denomination, uh, $5. I'm still thinking about denominations, $5 donation. Um, uh, thank you so much. Um, right. And so, uh, let you know, this is sort of like some of the stuff in the online course that I wanted to tell you about. There's a few things going on here that are, uh, leading to something and we shall see what, where it takes us. Yeah. 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 Uh, right. So kind of winging some of this today. Uh, I think. That's about it. Um, Indiana has no theoretical payout limits, uh, but they do have these return statistics for, by month and by casino. Uh, the tribal casino doesn't have return to statistics, nor does it have a theoretical payout limits. Um, so let's uh, uh, jump into the chat and uh, for a moment, and I will see uh, how we're how we're doing. Um, just scrolling back, you guys have been. Pretty busy, I see. Let me see if I can spot any questions. Uh, if you are a member of my YouTube channel, I will scan through the live chat and look for any questions from you because uh, you're pay paying customers. And uh, and if you gave a donation, I, I try to jump on those right away uh, and answer any questions that are asked there. So if you want to jump to the top of the list, you know what you need to do. Okay, so... Um, questions, 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 uh, right. Um, the Sands, uh, Kissy Cat says the Sands, uh, is advertising for Texas to get casinos. And we talked about that last time that will ever work. And we, we talked about that a little bit last time there is, uh, uh, a few precedents going on, uh, and let's see, I'll show that and I'll stop sharing that. Okay. Uh, we talked a little bit about that last time. I couldn't tell you where in the hour long presentation that was at, but we thought I, I talked a little bit about how there is a federal act that predates the uh, Indian Gaming Regulatory Act by about a year, uh, which uh, it takes legal precedent, and that's been used to halt any tribal casinos in Texas. But um, commercial casinos are possible. The tribal casinos, uh, you know, you'd think they'd be able to make that happen since 1989. Uh, so that's pretty good data for not having <laughs> tribal casinos in Texas that have class three slot machines. Uh, the, the, those that are open, the two that are open have class two. So commercial casinos um, might have a shot, uh, but let's move on from there. Um, I think I saw a question here uh, from Kerry. Uh, what is your quick spin method that Kissy Cat is talking about? Uh, it's one of my most popular videos. Uh, if you, um, uh, uh, let's see how to get that to you. Um, uh, 
uh, go to my YouTube channel and it'll be the one that's right in the front. Uh, you can also go to the down to the playlist and it's the it's winning strategy number one. It's called the five spin method, sometimes called the five uh, pull method, uh, also called only win immediately. There's two videos. Uh, if you play the first one, the second one will start afterwards, which is the first one is what is it? And the second one is how do you test it cheaply? Uh, too many people were telling me, too many people, many people were telling me, and I was getting a little bit worried for people. They were like, well, I'm just going to go to the high limits room and bet maximum. And I'm like, maybe check first to see if it <laughs> works at that casino on like a nickel machine <laughs> uh, or minimum bet on a, a penny machine. Uh, turns out minimum bet on a penny machine is more than a nickel machine and more than a quarter machine even. I think the minimum I've found is like 30 cents each. Um, so there's cheaper ways to test it before you go on. Um, maybe you got that answer already. Right. Uh, next questions. Yep. Uh, AK uh, uh, summed it up. <laughs> I made an eight minute video, but uh, AK says um, five spins and go on to another machine, win or lose. <laughs> uh, right. Okay. Um, so... And Michael says, I brought a $500 to Maristar in East Chicago, Indiana yesterday. I primarily used the five, primarily used the five pool method in $5 denominations. I cycled through the bankroll, but ended up losing 75% of it before leaving. Yeah, that's why I have a, I put together a second video about doing the same thing only on uh, not high limit, low limit. Oh, um, and I think I just saw, did I see something? Can you hear that? Can you hear my cat snoring? <laughs> um, and uh, okay, so oh, no, uh, there is a second donation from Nahal. Um, can a tribal casino have a central computer system? Absolutely. Uh, people think that tribal casinos are different from commercial casinos, and, and the gaming rigs are, but. The more it's run like a business, the better, more money the casino makes. So, yeah, uh, absolutely. Now, uh, there are tribal casinos, which are in a convenience store. Sometimes they're called casinos. So the requirement, commercial or tribal or Australia or England, is you need to have more than a few slot machines to pay for it. To pay for the central server and what's the lower end number 25 30 you know you really have to have it you know not five because it's just not worth it to the owner um so you have to have and so if it's of a sufficient size then they just scramble to get it because it's so much more worthwhile to them uh it it, it pays for itself but not if you don't have enough slot machines also, riverboat casinos uh, don't have them, but they're converting to land based and where they can have them. Basically, the floor is a hall and you can't punch through it. Otherwise, you sink. Um, and it's just muddy water and it's a barge, but still the concept works. Right. Um, I'm going to jump back up to where we're at. I've got a few more minutes before I wanted to uh, show you. Was there more to show you? Oh, um, yeah, there's just a few minutes more to show you. I wanted to share uh, how much money the casinos lost in Indiana, but let's, I'll take uh, some more of these questions. And right, where was I? Um, all the way back up to here. Um, yeah, I think I answered Michael's question, which was, uh, um, you know, check cheaply. Uh, the the taste that they're trying to give you is a practice is is not luck it is um it's not unknown to the casino the casino paid for that service to be installed on their slot machines so uh they have it on all slot machines because that's only fair or they don't have it so if they have it it's on all slot machines if they don't have it it's on no slot machines. And uh, what you want to do is then check on cheap machines before you run off to the high limit room. 
And that's something I didn't make clear the first time I posted that video two years ago. And uh, so this, when I posted it again a year ago, I tried to make sure some of this additional information was available. Um, uh, some people were like, my my high limit room has a thousand dollar denomination slot machine. Uh, and uh, you're telling me I should bet on that. I'm like, what? No, golden rule. You know, uh, only bet what you afford to lose. I feel... Um, I feel need, I need to be responsible and share that sort of information. Uh, do, 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 do. Comments, which from someone who is now gone uh, for cause. Okay. Um, you, oh, uh, Jason's uh, a regular, um, there is on his ATV, um, I bought my first slot machine for my home today. Now, one of these state by state, art, one of the things in these state by state articles is whether or not it's legal to have, to privately own a slot machine. And in all cases, you don't have your friends over and have them put money into it and offer gambling. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a big no, no. Um, but if, you know, my neighbor uh, bought one from a local store. They happened to have one not too far away. And, and he just, you know, it's a 2009 variety. So it's not, um, I'm not talking about the game theme, but I'm talking about the technology. So there's no central server or anything like that. It's not the big video screen. It's a little video screen and uh, things you might see in a 2009 version. And um, he showed me how to program it and other things. That's, you know, interesting. All things I expected. I'd seen some of the older variety ways of programming them. And this was the one with the... The, the voucher and you could feed in the uh, programming card and then you could get the new screens and you could put in what your um, uh, different settings for the uh, theoretical payout and blah, blah, blah. And you can make it win all the time and you can make it never win. And uh, I knew all that, but it was nice to see it in action. And then I had to wean myself from going over there to his garage and playing it all the time. <laughs> uh, right. Um, uh, right. And, um, fast RT four thirty six. I had luck with, uh, five spin at four wins in new Buffalo, uh, new, new Buffalo, Michigan. Yeah. I've been, um, uh, I've been hearing, hearing good things about that, uh, in our Michigan slots enthusiast, Facebook group. Uh, they're, they're doing really, they're got a good reputation with those. Um, have you found if one in a chain uses teaser that all do? Um, I haven't been tracking it that well, partly because I can't go to every casino. Um, but I have a suspicion that you're right. One of the things I, uh, you know, I, I learned at Beltara Park, this uh, five spin method, I saw it in action and, and built on it and explained it and videos and all that. So that means maybe Indiana, we're talking about Indiana, right? They have a Belter resort. What's the odds? You know, it, it's a corporate practice at one of their casinos. Now, Belter resort um, is, I don't think it's owned by Boyd yet. It might be. Um, but Belter Park, where I won the car, uh, where I learned the five spin method, they they did get bought by Boyd Gaming. But when I learned all this, it was be before that. So you kind of have to look at the business arrangement and they're still owned by the same people. Now, the uh, strategy seven, which if you haven't heard about it, it's come back a week later, play through the same time period in the same machine where you won a, a jackpot. I found that at, at, a, at Horseshoe. And uh, there's uh, a Caesars, Southern Indiana was Southern Indiana. Now it's uh, uh, Caesars uh, and in Indiana. And then there's also uh, Horseshoe Hammond, both owned by Caesars, which Horseshoe Cincinnati was owned by Caesars. Where, so just trying to relate this topic back to Indiana, that's what I would maybe start with. I have some trips coming up. Um, when I go on a trip, I don't stay for a week, so it's hard to come back. But if it's close, maybe I can. Anyway, uh, you know, yeah, there's a possibility since it's a casino business plan that the casino uh, is doing what the corporate office wants. Um, let's see. And we have, 
Lots of questions here. Mart Young, I have one more than $7,500 using his five spin method and pay loans off. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. And would a $10 donation kill you? No, I'm just kidding. You don't have to do that. <laughs> Am I kidding? I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I have. Uh, uh, all right. Congratulations. I'm happy for you. Uh, Let's see. Randy says, I play slots as a reservation casino in South Texas called the Lucky Eagle. Your five pole method has proved to work well for me there. And it's great advice. Really glad to find your channel. Yeah, it's really casino specific. The things that I'm trying, I, I've developed advantage plays based on common casino business practices. Not every casino will do all the common business practices casinos do, but they might do some of them. So you match them up. And you look for them. And so I try to explain what to look for. I try to find, try to explain, well, before you head off to the high limit room, do this so you can, you know, ease your way into it and reduce your risk, that sort of thing. Not to go on about that. All right. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, and that's one of the things on the on the uh, five spin method is uh, you don't know how much you're going to win, and hopefully you'll break even or better. And it can be pretty extraordinary sometimes. But then after like a year and a half, which what happened to my local casino, Belterra Park, um, they reduced the ten thousand or more dollar hand pays to uh, you know twenty bucks, fifty bucks. But it took a year and a half. And I remember I was winning five hundred, and I have some shorts on YouTube about showing some of these plays. Um, and I would just put a card in, and I'd, I'd win five hundred dollars. I put my money in, you know, make a couple of bets. Whenever I won, I stop, move to the next one, which was the whole point. And then I, I won five hundred dollars, and I'm like disappointed. And I'm like, why are you disappointed? Well, last month it was five thousand. You know, six months ago it was five thousand. I'm like, well, five hundred dollars is nice. <laughs> and then I slapped myself across the face and said, you know, pays for gas money for the for the like next three months. Get over yourself. <laughs> um, let's see, we got ten minutes left. I think there's more questions. Excellent. Uh, has anyone tried the five pull method at Soaring Eagle? Uh, that is my next trip. I'm not going to say exactly when it is, but it will be after I launch the course before I take a break and go out of here. And uh, it's easy enough to check. Somebody does it beforehand. That's fine. I I, uh, I like people to be able to figure out how to do it themselves, because if you have a casino change, then you're up to date and it doesn't take very long. So I don't like to like tell people it doesn't work, but I'll say, well, someone, you know, told me last week that uh, it, it works great at the Paris and on the strip, you know, but not so much on El Cortez on downtown. Um, you know, that was last, last week. Uh, that's what people have told me. Um, anyway. Oof. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> uh, there's, there's a whole lot of, um, uh, uh, so AK says, I can't wait for your uh, Michigan analysis. <laughs> um, uh, it is one casino and we shall see, but I'm trying to come up with a format where I kind of like record in my car and, uh, with my thoughts having just left the casino and sharing all that. I'm trying to find a fun way to do that. You know, I, I sometimes, uh, I bedroom downstairs set up as a YouTube studio and that's where you might see the back wall with the logs and, and, and all that here, this is a live chat. I got to have like three screens in front of me and um, you know, this is cats or co-hosts. Uh, and, um, uh, but then I wanted to have like a third location, which would be basically my car. And that would be when I go to different casinos. Now I can't go to every casino. Well, if I went to two per week, it would take me 10 years to go to every all 1000 casinos in the United States. And that's just not going to happen, but I'm trying to touch here and there. Like for instance, I really need to get to um, that four winds in South Bend in Indiana, because that's the closest class two bingo style gaming machines to me. Now I can't learn a lot from one casino, 
uh, having those. I need to go to like five or 10 just to see what's, what's different. So eventually I'm going to have to come, come to Oklahoma, but not right away because that's going to be like <laughs> a week-long trip or, trip or something. Anyway, um, I've asked enough, answered enough questions. Uh, I, uh, I guess I'll answer one more from AK. Do you think COVID along with online betting has hit casinos so much that slots are tighter? We're going over the data now. We're not going over why. We're just going over the data. So what's the cause? It's very interesting. Um, it's only speculation. Online uh, betting is a topic that I'm starting to get into a little bit, but there's very little information. Have I told you about going to a newly opened casino because they want to build a reputation in that area and get you kind of hooked or at least educated uh, to everybody in a 50 mile radius, you know, that, that that's not a cornfield anymore. And now it's a casino in Southern Indiana. <sighs> Online slots is like that. They're emerging in many States and they're trying to build a reputation. Now, what do these casinos land-based casinos do after a month or after a year? They, you know, cut the, the wind. So be, you know, online betting is very relatable to um, uh, online casinos. Uh, online casinos are very related to land-based casinos. They're using some of the same business practices and I'm starting to notice them. So I'm starting to kind of go a little bit in that area. Uh, but today, uh, now is perhaps the time to take advantage, but don't get hooked because that's what they're gaming. That's what they're aiming for. A little worried about all this. Um, <laughs> Steve says casino uh, lower talking about the reasons the casino lower the odds because of the stimulus money being sent to the, uh, uh, to them. Uh, yeah. If they can get, uh, um, I don't know if they really have to do that. 8% of how much they usually make is a lot less than 8% plus uh, of how much they usually make plus stimulus money. <laughs> so, uh, you know, casinos make money and uh, sometimes they don't have to try. Right. Um, uh, excellent question. Uh Native American dolphin says new viewer here, but what's a good rule of thumb about picking out a machine? Uh, first of all, game theme doesn't matter to winning. You may enjoy Buffalo something or other, Wheel of Fortune something or other. I have a fondness for Wheel of Fortune, but only because I've won so much on them. But it wasn't because, you know, any Wheel of Fortune, I had found some. So I don't think uh, my belief, my sincere belief is game theme doesn't matter to winning. But it does matter to individuals because they like to play their favorite games. That's not about a winning. So one of the things I talk about is what's your goal? Is it entertainment? Is it comps? Is it um, making money? Because that's kind of how you decide what's a winning machine. Define what winning is to you. But I'm going to assume that's making money. So it's not the game thing. Forget the game thing. Look for a casino at the entrance. Look for a casino, uh, a slot machine at the entrance. Look for that's kind of set up to win, be seen to win. You are looking for a machine. The most common way to find a good winning machine is to look for ones that are where if someone could see you win, a lot of people can see you win. The end of a row of identical slot machines, they're not identical, just have the same game thing. At the end of the row, next to the aisle, particularly if the aisle is not an aisle, but a walkway. And particularly if like the food court's over there and it's just before lunch and people are walking towards you and can see your screen, the casino wants you to win. And so they do a little odds adjustment and it's not on all the machines in that row. It is on the one in the end, sometimes on the second to the end. I have some videos out there about that and we're running slowly out of time. Looks like I might've actually gotten to all the questions this time. Um, right. Uh, so let's take a quick look at to this. So um, this is the differences. This is 2020 through uh, March 2021. And uh, you can see that the casinos were making money uh, in January 2020, February 2020, compared to 2019. 
They were making more than they had made in 2019. And then they just dropped off. Uh, these two months when they were, were fully closed, either month on either side of them was partially closed. So these are their losses compared to what they made in 2019 baseline. Uh, then this is the rest of them. This gets all a little bit which one's better, which one's not. Uh, this one up here is, uh, you know, play, win, player win percent is most important. But Ameristar here is uh, definitely making uh, a little bit of money compared to 2019, but a lot of the rest are below. So I thought, let's take a look at this and see what the comparison was to the other states that I've done. Now, I only did this particular report for New Jersey. Well, this is the total for Indiana, and this is the total for two states, Indiana and New Jersey, and the orange being uh, Indiana that we just did, and New Jersey kind of stops here. So New Indiana is doing better uh, than, uh, uh, you know, didn't lose as much money. I guess you could say that. I don't know if that's necessarily better. I'm not sure casinos would think so, but it's not, um, but they are doing um not as bad as New Jersey. And I mean, these two months, New Jersey uh, lost, I think it was 1.8 billion, 1.8 billion. Uh, Indiana lost uh, 1.6 billion, uh, almost 1.7 billion uh, in each of those two months. So, uh, you know, if they are they recovered? <sighs> I don't know. I don't think so. Um, they're, they're definitely took a hit, right? And how are they going to recover from that? We shall see. I mean, they weren't, uh, uh, you know, costs were reduced by people, but not, uh, don't need as many people working at the casinos and other things. So there's more to it than just slots revenue. But that's what we have access to with the return statistics. Okay. I think that is about where we're at. Um, very quickly, for those of you who are here now, um, I uh, am offering a online course and the link is in the show notes. Uh, this is a beta course where you'll be able to, to get it for 50% off, but you have lifetime access. So once it's uh, no longer beta because of all the feedback from the beta testers, um, eventually that'll be improved. Maybe in a month after I launch it, I'm pre-selling it now, that will become available for you and uh, as a non-beta version later, and you get $100%, $100 off, 50% uh, off uh, uh, if you purchase it now. And so that's been going on for a few weeks and launching is, uh, well, that's the quiet down. That's my... <laughs> That's my countdown clock. I got 12 days, 14 hours to get it done. And this is the course syllabus. And if you were to expand this, you can go look for yourself. Uh, this is a bunch of the things uh, that you can um, see the topics of. So 30 days, but each day has got like a lecture, I guess you would call it, um, uh, some tasks, uh, and then some resources uh, to back some of that stuff up. Uh, and uh, it's not meant to be hard. Uh, I think there's a, somebody said uh, there was a way to say this. Um, your Aunt Trudy, your great Aunt Trudy would have no problem taking this. That's how easy it's going to be. Um, now, you can also go down the rabbit hole and start asking some of the very good questions that people are asking in this live chat. And that's um, uh, and that's that's great. Um, uh, AK says, uh, don't forget to like, don't hit. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. That is appreciated. Uh, um, thank you. I uh, don't mean to tell you that was more of a 2010 way to succeed on YouTube, uh, but I do appreciate everybody's support. And um, and I did not share that. Uh, I think I did not share that. Uh, yes, so this is the site. And I will um, take a moment and just drop this in the live chat. So you have the link again, it's also in the show notes. There you are. And I will now say thanks for a great show. Have fun, be safe, make good choices. Bye. Remember to visit professorslots.com slash subscribe to get my free report revealing the top seven online resources for improving your gambling performance, including the one I've used as a top tier slot machine casino gambler. This is the next segment of the show on slot machine casino gambling. Here, I provide a brief overview of the current state of gambling in a U.S. state, territory, or the federal district, emphasizing by far anything of interest to slot machine casino gamblers. 
Up next is Mississippi Slot Machine Casino Gambling in 2021. Here goes. Mississippi Slot Machine Casino Gambling consists of 27 commercial casinos, many of them still riverboat casinos, and three American Indian tribal casinos. International cruise ships with onboard casinos depart from the ports of Biloxi and Gulfport. The minimum legal gambling age in Mississippi depends upon the gambling activity. For casinos and poker rooms, it's 21. For bingo, it's 18. And for the lottery and paramutual wagering, it's not available. Gambling in Mississippi has aided to the economy of the state and breathed new life into its tourism industry. In 1990, the Mississippi State Legislature was the third U.S. state to legalize riverboat gambling. By law, Mississippi's riverboat casinos must be located on coastal waters, the Mississippi River, and in navigable waters of counties bordering the Mississippi River. However, after Hurricane Katrina in 2005, the Mississippi Legislature allowed the state's Gulf Coast casinos to rebuild on land within 800 feet of the shoreline. Otherwise, winning a jackpot of $1,200 or more in Mississippi results in a non-refundable 3% tax of those winnings paid to the Mississippi Gaming Commission. This limit also applies to any cash prizes won in casino drawings and tournaments. Next up is a usually short statement about slot machine private ownership, which I have included in case you live in this U.S. state and are considering owning a slot machine. Here it is. It is legal to own a slot machine privately in Mississippi if it is at least 25 years old. The Mississippi Gaming Commission, MGC, is responsible for non-tribal commercial casinos. Gaming regulations are from MGC, but also from the state legislature's Gaming Control Act. The Mississippi Band of Choctaw Indians also has its Choctaw Gaming Commission for Mississippi's three tribal casinos. The Gaming Compacts, which authorized tribal gaming in Mississippi, established this Gaming Commission. In this section, I'll discuss Mississippi gambling establishments. Mississippi has 27 commercial casinos, three American Indian tribal casinos, and cruise ships sailing out of the ports of Biloxi and Gulfport to international destinations. The largest casino in Mississippi is Island View Casino Resort. The second largest casino is Silver Star Casino at Pearl River. Mississippi has 27 commercial casinos as well as three tribal casinos owned by Pearl River Casinos and Resorts. As usual, when there are too many casinos to mention here, a complete list along with a casino map are on my webpage for this state at professorslots.com ms. As an alternative to enjoying Mississippi slot machine casino gambling, consider exploring casino options in a nearby state. Bordering Mississippi is to the north, Tennessee, to the east, Alabama, to the south, the Gulf of Mexico, and to the west, Arkansas and Louisiana. To visit any of my articles on these U.S. states, simply visit professorslots.com followed by its two-letter postal designation. For example, my Tennessee Slots article is available at professorslots.com slash tn. Are you interested in sharing and learning with other slots enthusiasts in Mississippi? If so, join our Mississippi Slots community on Facebook at professorslots.com slash fbms. All you'll need is a Facebook profile to join this private Facebook group freely. There, you'll be able to privately share your slots experiences as well as chat with players about slots gambling in or near Mississippi. Again, use this convenient link I've created to go directly to our group on Facebook, professorslots.com slash fbms. Join us. The Mississippi Gaming Commission offers monthly return statistics for commercial casinos in three state regions. The central region, including the cities of Vicksburg and Natchez. The northern region, including the cities of Tunica, Greenville, and Lula. And the coastal region, including the cities of Biloxi, Gulfport, and Bay St. Louis. The minimum and maximum theoretical payout limits are 80% and 100% according to MGC's Regulations Part 3 Operations. There, see Rule 12.5, Minimum Standards for Gaming Devices. These theoretical payout limits apply for each wager of a gaming machine. If the gaming device played is a skill-based competition-style gaming machine, they apply when playing with optimal strategy. Monthly revenue reports from MGC offer the most recent month's slots player win percent. Otherwise, their monthly archives offer return statistic reports from the last 20 years. These revenue reports offer the win percent for machine denominations for all casinos combined within each state region, central, northern, and coastal. Furthermore, progressive machines have separate entries by denomination and the number of machines with each slot machine denomination is listed. Gaming machine types included in these reports are slot machines, video poker machines, and video kino machines. For March 2021, the player win percent by state region and statewide for all machine denominations were central region 91.3%, coastal region 91.5%, northern region 92.1%, and statewide 91.6%. The highest player win percent by slot machine denomination and state region, including whether it's progressive machine or not, 
was for the central region, nickel non-progressives at 96.5%, for the coastal region, quarter progressive machines at 95%, and in the northern region, $10 non-progressive machines at 98.3%. Relative to other U.S. gaming jurisdictions, the gaming revenue reports provided by Mississippi are the most thorough treatment I've seen of any U.S. state for return statistics. The Mississippi Band of Choctaw Indians has not established theoretical payout limits in their gaming compact or by its Choctaw Gaming Commission. And as is often the case with tribal casinos, no actual return statistics are publicly available. In summary, Mississippi slot machine casino gambling consists of 27 commercial casinos, three tribal casinos, and cruise ships with onboard casinos sailing out of the ports of Biloxi and Gulfport on the Gulf Coast to international destinations. In the last year, Lady Luck Casino Vicksburg is under new ownership by Bollies and is now Casino Vicksburg. Remember to sign up at ProfessorSlots.com slash 30 days to register for my online course for slots enthusiasts. 30 days to play slots smarter and win, including how to leave a casino with your winnings. Part one of the next episode of the Professor Slots podcast will include a live stream Q&A session on YouTube. Remember, my weekly Q&A session on YouTube is on Saturdays from noon until 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Bring whatever slots questions you have and I'll do my best to answer them. An easy to remember link to my YouTube channel is youtube.com slash Professor Slots. Feel free to stop by anytime during my hour-long live Q&A session. Part 2 of the next episode of the Professor Slots podcast is another brief overview of the current state of gambling in a U.S. state, territory, or the federal district. Next time, I'll be talking to you about the great U.S. state of Missouri. That's the end of another great episode of the Professor Slots podcast. Thanks so much for listening. Show notes for this episode are on my website at professorslots.com slash episode 137. I plan to have the next episode come out very soon for you, where I'll have more amazing content for the show. Until the next episode, have fun, be safe, and make good choices. Bye.